We will rejoice and we shall be glad in it. Are you glad this morning? I am filled with the joy of the Lord. What are you full of this morning? The joy of the Lord. Good, good, good. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you now as we come into your presence this day that you're here in the midst of us. Holy Spirit, we thank you that you say in your word that you are our teacher, that you are our leader, that you are our guide, that you are the one who brings revelation of the truth to our minds and to our hearts, our spirits, oh God. So I ask you, Holy Spirit, that you just minister among your people this day. I thank you, Father, for the truth coming forth and setting captives free. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen and amen. We thank you for the anointing. Hallelujah, hallelujah. These are the days of obeying the Spirit of God. How many of you were here last week? Say yay. Yay Yay and amen. One of the things I want to encourage you before I get into the Word this morning, if you're here today live or you're watching this on YouTube, I want to encourage you to share the videos. We have over 300 videos up right now on our channel. And please feel free to share the videos. Get other people excited. If, if the Word of God has brought insight and has brought healing, has brought excitement to you, please share it. Let other people in on your secret. Amen? That way other lives can be touched. We've been talking about these are the days of obeying the Spirit of God. One of the things that we looked at last week was that God hasn't given us the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. How many sophroneos do we have here? We have a sound mind, and our mind is delivered. It's protected. Our emotions are protected. They have a soundness. They are made well. We have salvation in our mind through the, through the blood of Jesus. We have self-control. We are disciplined in our mind. Amen? In, first, in, in 2 Timothy 3, we read that these are the perilous times that he talked about. Paul talked about perilous times would come and how important it is for us to hear the leading and the guidance of the Holy Spirit in these days. A lot of people in these perilous times are wrapped up with fear. They don't want to come out of their houses. They're dressed up in hazmat suits. I went to, to BJ's and there was a lady literally wearing a hazmat suit. You know? And she was just there to buy cookies. It wasn't like she was there to pick up radioactive isotopes. You know? Living in the last days require for us to have greater sensitivity to the Holy Spirit of God. You agree? Romans 8.14, as many that are led by the Spirit of God, those are the sons of God. He's our leader. He's our guide. And he would guide us into the things that he said he would show us to come. The things that are down the road, the things that are coming, he would reveal to us before they would happen. That's a great thing. You know, it's it's just like the same thing. Before God does anything, he would reveal it to his prophets first. Right? The Holy Spirit will reveal things to come to us. So we have to be in that place. Amen? Amen where we can receive a greater blessing in our lives. We talked about being baptized in the Holy Spirit. And I'm happy to say last week about five or six people received the baptism of the Holy Spirit last week. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. So these people received a greater endowment of power. Amen. Greater to overcome sin. Greater to hear the leading and the voice of the Spirit of God. We need to be baptized and immersed in the Holy Spirit. Amen? Was that a quick review? Good. Let's pick up where we left off. As we obey the Word of God and listen to the Holy Spirit of love's leading, we will have the very wisdom of God. Say wisdom. There's two types of wisdom out there the Bible talks about. It's the wisdom of man and the wisdom of God. The wisdom of God is holy and righteous. The wisdom of man, the Bible calls devilish. Why is it devilish? Because it's based upon natural, not supernatural. It's based upon limitation of mankind instead of unlimited, untapped power and potential that God has. The wisdom of God is greater than any man's wisdom. The wisdom of man makes perfect sense. The wisdom of God never makes sense. 
Amen? Because it's got nothing to do with your carnal mind. It's got nothing to do with your five senses. It's got nothing to do with your feelings. Go dip in a polluted river seven times and be healed. Does that make sense? Well, I can't do it three times. Stop doing things your own way. Just be obedient. Listen to the voice of God and do what God tells you to do. Amen? Amen. Amen. If we try to take another approach, there's no guarantee for us to claim. But when we take the approach of following what the Holy Spirit tells us, based upon the Word of God, we have a guarantee in writing. We can stake our claim as that being a personal promise to us. Right? I encourage you all to exercise and increase your level of faith. Right? I told you the importance of praying in the Holy Spirit. Say praying in the Holy Spirit. How many of you pray in the Holy Spirit? How many of you do it regularly? How many of you have developed such a second nature language that it just comes automatic? Amen? How many find yourself in the shower, rub-a-dub-dub, -dub, three men and a quid of the maki? Hopefully you're not singing rub-a-dub-dub, -dub, three men in a tub. Okay? But you get the point, right? Amen? All of a sudden, the Holy Spirit will just give you an unction just to begin to pray, and you don't even know why. And that's good because you don't know why. But he knows why. Amen? He's tapped into the heart and the mind of the Father, and he knows everything we need. We're going to hear more about that today. Let's pick up where we left off. In Jude 20, in the Passion Translation, we said this. He said this. But you, my delightfully loved friends, constantly and progressively build up yourselves on the foundation of your most holy faith by praying every moment in the Spirit. Let me ask you a question. Are you praying at every moment? Do you think it's possible? I think it's possible to get to that point where at every moment you're in communing with God. Fasten your hearts to the love of God and receive the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ, who gives us eternal life. Keep being compassionate to those who still have doubts or are those, the definition of doubts, are those who are still undecided. Undecided about what? Except in Christ. Undecided, come to church with you. Undecided, should I receive one of those prayer cards? Right? Be compassionate towards them. Don't tackle them and force it down their throat. Right? Be compassionate. And then, verse 23, snatch others out of the fire to save them. Be merciful over and over to them, but always couple your mercy with the fear and reverence of God. Be extremely careful to keep yourselves free from the pollutions of the flesh. The pollutions of the flesh. In the Passion Translation, it says this, hating even the garment, the snake skin or the coating, of the pollution of the flesh, the natural realm. You see, you want to be known as people who are supernatural. You want to be known as people that know their God. And when we yield to the things of the flesh, or we put on the corruption, this evil stuff, we cloud out the truth of who Christ is. We don't want to deflect the Messiah from people who need to find Messiah. Right? I don't want people to look at me and see me. I want people to look at me and see the power and the glory of God. Amen? Amen. 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 I mean, I'm the biggest clown in the house. I'll joke around all you want, but it's the time when you've got to be serious. You've got to be serious, especially when you're in the face of those that need to know God. Amen. Amen. Amen? I believe most of you here know God. Some of you are on the path of getting to know God. You're going in the right direction. But when we're out there in the world, I don't want to put on a front and pretend I'm them. Why would they want to be like me if I'm like them? They don't want to change. They don't have to change. They see no reason to change. If I'm condoning their lifestyle, well, then fine with them. But we have to go out there and present righteousness and truth. And the only way we could truly do that is by hearing the voice of the Holy Spirit of love and being led by him. And the way we do this is by getting 
closer in relationship with the Holy Spirit. This is one of the reasons why we want to be immersed and baptized in the Holy Spirit, that when we open up our mouth, it'll be words of wisdom from God that can penetrate the heart and bring true conviction and repentance to those that need to know God. You don't trick people into heaven. I mean, I had people, you know, people have good hearts and they mean well, you know. We had someone that wanted to help out with evangelism a couple years ago. We're going to do a big campaign this summer. And how are we going to get people saved? We're going to give out iPads to everyone. Free iPads. You don't trick people into the kingdom. You love them. Now, don't get me wrong. If the Holy Spirit tells you to bless someone with an iPad, then you do it. But if it's just a trick or a scheme, how do you win people with schemes? If you send $100, I'll send you this special anointing oil that came from my refrigerator. <laughs> you know, schemes don't work. Amen. Verse 24. Now, this is a cool scripture. This is one you should meditate on. Now, to the one with enough power to prevent you from stumbling into sin, the Greek, to keep you from harm, and bring you faultless before the glorious presence to stand before him with ecstatic delight. He is able to keep you from stumbling. He's able to keep you from falling. He's able to keep you strong. The scripture says when you've done all to stand, stand. When you've done everything you could possibly do in your human strength and your human ability not to give to temptation or not to fall to a weakness, right? you've done everything you could do to stand in faith, stand. In other words, what it's saying is you've done everything in your own strength. Now depend upon the Holy Spirit and stand. Stand. Stand for truth, stand for righteousness, stand in faith, be unshakable, be unmovable, be on solid ground at all times. Base your life in the word of God, that when the winds come and the rains hit it, that you do not fall like a house built on Fire Island. A house built on sand. We, don't, you know, we stand, we, and Jesus is our sure foundation. Amen? Turn to David and say, he's sure. Sure is. Amen? Right, so we, we, it says, bring your, your faultiness before the glorious presence and stand before him with ecstatic delight. Let me read that for, again from the beginning. Now, to the one with enough power to prevent you from stumbling into sin or harm and bring you faultless before the glorious presence to stand before him with ecstatic delight. To obey, I'm sorry, to the only God, our Savior, through our Lord Jesus Christ, be endless glory and majesty, great power and authority from before he created time, now and throughout all the ages of eternity. Amen. Amen. Did you get that? Amen. In other words, we do all we can to bring others to Christ, but not at the expense of becoming like them and ignoring sin. You know, some people say, well, you know, I'm free in God. You know, I, I could do as I please. I, I go to the clubs and I dance and I minister Jesus to them as I'm on the dance floor. You know, we're not supposed to be partakers of their sin. You know, you could stand in front of a club. You could stand in front of a bar. You know, but you don't participate with them to win them. Because you want them to become like the most high. You don't want to become like, Satan to win them to become like the Most High. It's a contradiction of terms. It's carnal reasoning. And carnal reasoning will always get you out of the will of God. Terrence, you never say that. Carnal reasoning will always get you out of the will of God. Especially when it comes to eternal matters. Amen? I mean, carnal reasoning, should I have corn or peas? Of course. You can reason out things like that. You know, there are certain things, you know, okay, sure. You know, it's a decision, it's a choice. I don't think you need to go on a 12-day fast to figure out if you're going to make corn or broccoli. <laughs> Super spiritual giants do things like that. And they get the Brussels sprouts anyway. <laughs> Amen? So Jude says this in the closing of his short letter. This is what he says. He brings out 
seven points in this closing. Did you notice there were seven points there? Number one, keep building up your inner life on the foundation of faith by praying in the Spirit. Build yourself up in your most holy faith, praying in the Spirit, it says in King James, New King James. Building up yourself in your most holy faith, praying in the Spirit. When you got saved, it took a mustard seed of faith to get saved. But a mustard seed grows into a mustard tree. A mustard seed is not supposed to stay as a mustard seed. Because every seed that is planted is supposed to come to fruition. That's God's plan. Right? So we build up our faith by hearing the word of God. Hebrews 10, 17. Faith comes by hearing and hearing what God says. Hearing the voice of the Spirit. Hearing the voice of God builds up our faith. When God tells you, my child, do this. And you go, oh, okay. And you do it. And it manifests fruit. And you go, wow, that's a miracle. Next time you hear God, you go, okay. Next time you hear God, you go, absolutely. You say, come on, God, tell me more. Because you're beginning to be increased in your overcoming faith, in the faith to receive, in the faith to do the impossible. See, it all starts out with the little seed, and it begins to grow. The mustard tree is one of the biggest, strongest trees in that region. Right? So praying in the Spirit tells us that we build up our most holy faith. From mustard seed to a full tree bearing more seeds. Amen? And it causes us to walk closer to God, having greater intimacy with Him. The thing that overcomes the world, 1 John 5, 4, faith. Your King James Bible might say, the thing that overcomes the world, our faith. But the word our is italicized. That means tilted. And when you see tilted words in the King James Bible, that means the author added the word to the text to help bring clarity. The original translation says, the thing that overcomes the world, faith. That's why we're a faith church, to teach you how to overcome. Overcome addictions, overcome sickness, overcome disease, overcome lack. Speaking the word, decreeing the word, declaring the word, standing on the promises of God, being who God called you to be, and nothing less. Amen? Because the faith overcomes the world. The faith, what faith? The faith of God's word and faith in God. Amen? So number one, keeping yourself built up on the most holy foundation, praying in the spirit. The second thing, it sounds redundant, but the second thing is to pray in the spirit. Pray in the spirit. We need to be people who are intentionally praying in the spirit. When you got saved, theology here. When you got saved, you accepted Jesus. But the Bible says Jesus is at the right hand of the Father. You accepted Jesus. People say, don't you want to invite Jesus into your heart? Well, of course I do. But technically, you're inviting the Spirit of Jesus into your heart or the Holy Spirit into your heart. So when you have the Holy Spirit in you and you become baptized in the Holy Spirit and you begin to develop a heavenly prayer language through the Holy Spirit, you are allowing the Holy Spirit in you to speak out of your mouth. You want me to say that again? Even though you're making the noises, turn to your neighbor and say noises. You're making the sounds, say sounds. You're making the utterance with your tongue. Right? It is the Holy Spirit's voice coming out. It sounds like you because it's your tongue, but you are giving control over your vocal cords, your breathing, your tongue to the Holy Spirit. You are in full control of it. You could stop it mid sentence. You could stop it. Oh, someone's coming. They're going to think I'm nuts. They already think you're nuts. Relax. (laughs) Amen? But you're allowing him, right? So pray in the Holy Spirit of love. Number three, fasten your life to the love of God. Now this is good because praying in the Holy Spirit of love, how could you not attach and fasten yourself to the love of God? You're praying in the Holy Spirit of love. 
You have been baptized in the Holy Spirit of love. You've been baptized in love. How could you not fasten yourself to love when you're praying in the Spirit? You see, all of these things are hinged on praying in the Spirit. Fasten your life to the love of God. How? Praying in the Spirit. Number four, receive more mercy from our Lord Jesus Christ. How do you receive more mercy? By praying in the Spirit. He has given all the mercy that we could possibly obtain. It's up to us to receive it. I gave the example a couple weeks ago about football. A quarterback needs a receiver. Or else the ball just falls and it's a, you know, it's, it's a down. <laughs> I don't want to be down. Amen? So we receive more mercy from the Lord Jesus Christ. Now let me ask you a question. Why do we need to receive more mercy? Because we need to be merciful. We don't need mercy because we're wretched. We need to be merciful for those who are wretched. Can I get a big fat amen? amen. Right? We receive the mercy of God so we can impart the mercy of God onto those who need it. Amen? amen. Mercy me. Number five, have compassion on the wavering. Some years back, many years ago, it's probably 25 years ago, there was a young man that, that started out when the ministry was still a house, you know, and he had some issues emotionally because he had been emotionally abused by his mom and his brother. And he would struggle and waver in his walk, you know, and at the time one of the elders said, oh, why don't you just throw him out of here? So that's not what we do. We've got to have mercy and compassion on these people. We've got to encourage them, you know. We have to have compassion on those that waver. Amen. The definition of compassion, Jesus, the Bible said, was moved with compassion. What moves you? Compassion is what's supposed to move us. And the definition for compassion is basically the ability to feel and experience someone's pain. When you're a self-centered person, you don't care about anybody and their pain. All you care about is getting your seat on the subway. It's a fact, Jack. Right? We got to have compassion for those who are wavering. Those who are in, maybe in your life, who are weighing the scales of whether they should totally surrender to Christ or run away in terror. <laughs> you know? Compassion on them. Pray for them. Speak words of edification. Put yourself in their shoes. Feel their situation. Feel their pain. You will be able to minister to them much greater than if you just said, eh, why don't you grow up already? Amen? Number six, command. Share the gospel with those who are lost. You have been called for the sole purpose of reproduction. Before the service, we were talking about bunnies, weren't we? Brief moment about bunnies, you know. What are bunnies known for? Keep it clean. Reproduction. Bunnies make many other bunnies. I have bunnies in my yard. I live in West Hempstead. We have, you know, wild hares. You know, all of a sudden there's one. All of a sudden there's four. Where do they come from? They multiply. God calls us sheep. I should have said he should have called us bunnies. Because we are supposed to multiply. We are supposed to be out there winning people to Christ. That is why you've all been called. Turn to your neighbor and say call. You all have been called out of darkness. You all have calling in your life. It's not just the pastor. It's not the apostle, the prophet, the teacher, the evangelist. You are all called to do the work of an evangelist. Paul told Timothy, a pastor, to do the work of an evangelist. Amen? We are all ministers of reconciliation, bringing the lost back, reconciling them to their heavenly Father. Amen? Amen? Share the gospel with those who are lost. And number seven, hate any and all 
compromise that will stain our lives. Stay away from compromise. Stay away from sin. Let go of the sins that easily beset you. The sins that easily get you off track. Cut them like a hot air balloon. They are weighing you down. Cut them so you can soar higher. Amen. How many want to go higher? Amen. Verses 24 and 25 in the Amplified Classic Translation says this, Now to him who is able to keep you without stumbling or slipping or falling and to present you unblemished, blameless, and faultless before the presence of his glory in triumphant joy and exultation with unspeakable ecstatic delight. To the one only God, our Savior, through Jesus Christ our Lord, be glory, splendor, majesty, might, and dominion, and power, and authority before all time and now and forever, unto all the ages of eternity. Amen. So be it. Amen? Amen. So you're catching this. Now let's look at a very familiar scripture. Those that have been part of Pillars for quite some time probably have heard me say this on more than one occasion. It's a scripture that is so quoted by so many believers. It's Romans 8.28. Romans 8.28 says, And we know that all things work together for good for those who love God and who are called according to his purposes. And that is a scripture that is quoted so often out of context because it sounds good. Well, all things work together for the good, you know. You know, I lost my job, the house burned down, but God's working it all together for good. Not what the verse means. Absolutely not what the verse means. It's not talking about your misfortunes being for God's glory. It's not talking about your loss being for God's glory. It's not talking about your suffering being for God's glory. Let's find out what it really says, okay? I'll give you a hint. It has to do with praying in the Spirit. Things do not automatically work together for good. Turn to your neighbor and say that. Things do not automatically work together for good. In Romans 8, verse 22 to 30, in the Passion Translation. Romans 8, 22. You ready? To this day, we are aware of the universal agony and the groaning of creation. We know that the earth is groaning, right? The earth has groanings, right? Because it, the earth itself is going through turmoil. Right? The natural earth itself is going through turmoil. We see the earthquakes, we see all these different things, natural disasters that take place, because the earth too wants to be restored as God originally planned it to be. Right? So, as if it were in contractions of labor for childbirth. And it's not just creation. We who have already experienced the first fruits of the spirit say first fruits of the spirit also inwardly groan as we passionately long to experience our full status as god's sons and daughters including our physical bodies being transformed now the footnote in the passion says this the first fruits of the spirit would include his indwelling presence his gifts his wisdom and his transforming power. Imagine what the full harvest of the Spirit would bring to us, as opposed to just the first fruit of it. Once we receive the Holy Spirit, and we begin the baptism of the Holy Spirit, we begin to have this presence, his gifts and his wisdom. As we begin to grow in the gifting of the Holy Spirit, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, it begins to create life in us, right? The Aramaic translates it this way, the first fruits of the Spirit, the awakening of the Spirit. Awakening means coming to full life. You ever see that movie with Robert De Niro many years ago, Awakenings? It's about these guys, the people that were in this canatotic state and they discovered that a certain medicine would bring them out of it, you know? 
The only thing is, is they built up an immunity to it and they went back to their former state. You know, when we build up ourselves in our most holy faith, build ourselves up in the spirit, we begin to experience the life and the power of God. Right? Catching me? Verse 24, for this is the hope of our salvation. But hope means that we must trust and wait for what is still unseen. For why would we need to hope for something we already have? So because our hope is set on what's yet to be seen, we patiently keep on waiting for its fulfillment. In a similar way, the Holy Spirit takes hold of us in our human frailty to empower us in our weakness. Right? For example, at times we don't even know how to pray or know the best things to ask for. But the Holy Spirit rises up within us to super intercede. Say super intercede. On our behalf, pleading to God with emotional sighs or groanings, your translation might say, too deep for words. So, the Holy Spirit rises up within us. When we don't know what to pray, we pray in the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit knows what you need in your situation. Right? And He prays to the Father. And sometimes He prays with groanings. What's a groaning? It's like that sound you make when you wake up Sunday morning and your wife says, come on, it's time to go to church. Uh. Right? Sometimes we could pray in the Spirit, and most of us pray in the Spirit. You know? But sometimes we find ourselves in situations where we're facing pain. Torment is trying to come in. Maybe your family situation. And you just don't know what to say. And the Holy Spirit, because He loves you, and He loves the people around you, will begin to just rise up with you in a prophetic groan. And travailing. You ever hear a woman giving birth? Any woman here ever give birth? Any men give birth? Spiritually? Yeah. The delivery room, the delivery ward of the hospital is a very quiet place. No, 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 no. There's screaming and there's crying and there's ah! sounds being made. Because things are being birthed. There's a travail and a groaning that takes place. And we have to understand that the progression of praying in the Holy Spirit at times can bring us to the place of groaning or travailing in the Spirit. Which is more than just la di 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 do It's on your face usually. Or on your knees at the very least. Because... In the natural, women have to get into a birthing position. You know, we've been at this location here since 1984, and probably thousands of people have walked past this driveway or this walkway, and I've never seen one walk by and just pop a baby out. Oh, look. Just, no. No. There are no accidental births. We might have some accidental pregnancies, but there's no such thing as an accidental birth. In the spirit, we are called to birth things. We are called to produce life. We are called to multiply. We are called to intercede and stand in the gap for those who don't know how to pray for themselves. And when we begin to pray in the spirit and it becomes a travailing or a groaning in the spirit, you might not even know who or what you're praying for. All of a sudden, the urgency comes upon you to do it, and you just obey because last week we talked about 
This is about obeying the Spirit of God. Amen. Amen? So, for example, at times, we don't even know how to pray or know the best things to ask. But the Holy Spirit rises up within us to super intercede on our behalf, pleading to God with emotional sighs too deep for words. The Greek word for intercede here is hupatonkano. Can you say that? Don't. And it is best translated super or hyper intercession. Super or hyper intercession for us. We can only imagine how many blessings have poured into our lives because of this type of hyper intercession of the Holy Spirit within us. So praying in the Holy Spirit is good, and I recommend it, but you need to use it to the point that it turns into the groanings. Some Christians have never groaned in the Spirit their entire Christian life. Maybe some didn't know they should. The voice translation of verse 26 says this way, a similar thing happens when we pray. We are weak and do not know how to pray. So the Spirit steps in and articulates prayers for us with groanings too, pro too profound for words. He articulates prayers for us with groanings too profound for words. Amen? Amen? Let's continue. Verse 27 of Romans 8. Verse 27. God, the searcher of the heart, knows fully our longings. Say longings. longings. Your desires, what you want. Yet, he also understands the desires of the Spirit because the Holy Spirit passionately pleads before God for us, his holy ones. In perfect harmony with God's plan, and our destiny. So when we pray in the Holy Spirit or even begin to groan in the Holy Spirit, our plans and God's plans merge into one plan. It's God's plan first. It's like when we do the will of God, we touch the desire of God's heart, God touches the desire of our heart. If we sow, we reap. Cannot get away from the principle. So if you do what God says, you reap the rewards of it. Amen. You may come to God because you have already figured out what you want for your life. I want to be a rocket scientist. I want to be an astronaut. I want to be a shark fisherman. That's what I wanted to be when I was a kid. I wanted to be a shark fisherman. I wanted to be a charter boat captain. That's what I wanted to be when I was a kid. Instead, he made me the captain of this ship. And now I don't fish for fish. I fish for men. Oh, this one's fighting. Oh, there he is. He just came to church. My man? Let's say this again. God, the searcher of the heart, knows fully our longings. Yet, he also understands the desires of the Spirit because the Holy Spirit passionately pleads before God for us, his holy ones, in perfect harmony with God's plan and our destiny. So we are convinced that every detail of our lives in continually woven together to fit into God's perfect plan of bringing good to our lives. Did you hear that? So we are convinced. Are you convinced? That every detail of our lives is continually woven together to fit into God's perfect plan of bringing good into our lives. For we are his lovers who have, who have been called to fulfill his design purpose. For he knew all about us before we were born, and he destined us from the beginning to share the likeness of his son. This means the son is the oldest among a vast family of brethren or brothers and sisters who will become just like him. Having determined our destiny ahead of time, he called us to himself and transferred his perfect righteousness to everyone that he called. And those who possess his perfect righteousness, he co-glorified with his son. Amen? So we got this 
praying in the Spirit, right? Then all things work together for good, right? So when we allow the Holy Spirit to pray, and we're praying and we're interceding and we're groaning, all things begin to work for good. So there's a situation, there's a problem. The Holy Spirit will show you things to come, and he'll say, you better watch out. And then you start praying in the Spirit, and you start groaning in the Spirit, and then you cause all things to turn to work together for good. Amen. It's not an acceptance of misery. It's a warning to pray in the Spirit to prevent misery. Amen. Amen. All things work together for the good only when you're praying in the Holy Spirit, groaning and travailing in the Spirit. Then you cause all things. Actually, He causes all things to work for the good. You just have to cooperate with the Holy Spirit. You are partners with the Holy Spirit. You need to cooperate with the Holy Spirit of love. So the perfect will of God is manifest in our lives. Amen? And you know that God's will is perfect. I call it the perfect will of God because I don't believe there's any other kind of will of God. Amen? Perfect God, perfect will. Not permissive will. You ever hear people say, well, God's permissive will. He allowed you to get cancer so you can get closer to him. Unscriptural will. Amen? God's will is perfect. And his will is for you to be blessed and to prosper and be in health. Even as, his, even as our soul prospers, his soul prospers in us. Amen? Amen? Everything we deal with in life is not of God. Did you realize that? Therefore, not all things work together for good. The easiest way to answer is to explain the true meaning. When all is said and done, all things work together for good for those who are praying in agreement and partnership with the Holy Spirit of love. When you are praying in agreement and partnering with the Holy Spirit of love, you cause all things to work together for the good. Hence the words, and we know all things work together for the good, for those who love God and are called according to his purpose. Notice the word starts with and. And is a conjunction. It means it's connected to what was previously just said. Amen? It's dependent upon the previous verses. It's not a standalone scripture. There's a lot of standalone scriptures that people pull out of context and use them. Amen? Amen? Job said, the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. That's why I have nothing, because God took it away. No. Job said it. God didn't. Job was unaware of what was taking place behind the scenes. We have the Holy Spirit of God. We should always be aware what's taking place behind the scenes. Amen? Hallelujah. Can I get a big fat amen? Amen. amen. It also helps to know the will of God. If you don't know the word and you're not hearing the, the leading or the guiding of the Holy Spirit, how are you going to know what God's will is in your situation that you face? Last week we talked about Holy Spirit being the guide. It's like we go to the Amazon forest. We don't know where we're going. We step foot in there, we're bound to be lost. We need to have a guide that knows the trails and knows the markers in the trail, how to get us out safely. Amen. Holy Spirit's our guide. He will guide you into all truth. He will guide you into revelation. He will guide you into deeper intimacy with your heavenly Father than ever before. Amen. And he will guide you around misfortune. Remember, we use the example of Jesus and we use the example of Paul in the book of Acts. When there was persecution, when they wanted to kill them, the Holy Spirit sent them a different way to avoid catastrophe. Why do Christians suffer so much? Well, I think in part is because they open themselves to it and they haven't followed what God told them to do. They had a better way. Remember Frank Sinatra? He did it his way. Frank hasn't resurrected. Don't do it your way. Do it God's way. Amen? Amen. The will of God is that none of us suffer or go through difficult times. That is God's will. This doesn't mean that difficulties don't come. But when they do, we can rest assured that they are not from God. This is one way that we pray in agreement with the Holy Spirit. So when trouble comes your way, sickness comes your way, you know, 
negativity comes your way, persecution comes your way, you just get into the presence of God and you start praying in the Spirit to bring change, not only to the situation, but change to you. Because the Holy Spirit is building you up as you build yourself up on His most holy faith. Amen? This is, in short, praying in agreement with the Holy Spirit and the only way all things can work together for good. Paul was encouraging the believers to utilize the supernatural gift that lived in them, the Holy Spirit of love and power. He is the Holy Spirit of love, but he's also the Holy Spirit of power. Amen? By and through praying in the Spirit, the perfect prayer language, the dunamis power of God can be released into your very situation. Amen? Did you all receive this today? Amen. Was this good? Was this powerful? Next time we're going to talk more about groaning in the Spirit. All right, Because that's a topic that some people have never heard of. There are some people that don't believe in it. Right? Well, that's just a, a silent voice on the inside that the Holy Spirit is making to the Father. Well, then we should pray silently in the Spirit too then, if that was the case. But we don't. Because we need to use our tongue. Turn to neighbor and stick your tongue out. It's okay, you're wearing masks. Right? Because everything God created, listen, everything God created was through his tongue. And we being like him, how do we create or recreate? Through our tongue. So quiet prayers don't produce much. It's when you release your faith. Faith comes by hearing and hear what God said. How much greater is it when you hear what God said out of your own mouth? This is why we speak the word. This is why we confess the word. This is why we are a word church. It's all about the word. It's about speaking truth over lies. It's about building up your faith based upon what God said, not what the doctor said. We don't deny the doctors. Doctors play a role in our lives. How many of you have a doctor? I have a doctor, right? But if the doctor comes back with something and says, listen, you know, you got cholesterol. I said, don't we all? I'm Italian. Olive oil runs in my veins. Garlic too. But now I know what to do about it. I need to pray, right? And cut down, you know, from 19 slices of bacon to 18. You know, whatever, you know, you get the point. But doctors are a source of information in the natural so we can take a spiritual approach to it. Amen? Amen? So we too can overcome those things. Amen? Amen? Amen. I'm glad you received this morning. I'm excited about the next lesson because it's going to deal all about these groanings. Jesus groaned in the Spirit. Paul groaned in the Spirit. And we're going to look at those examples next week. Amen? Amen. Why don't you give the Lord a shout this morning? Amen. Hallelujah. Bless His holy name. Bless His holy name. Now, if there's anyone here who needs healing in their body, just rise to your feet. We'll pray for you. We're all doing well. Is there anyone here that's never given their life to Jesus, never made Jesus the Lord of their lives? Each and every one of us are saved. Yeah, good. Now, everyone that is saved here, all we have to do is reproduce. Right? Humans by nature. Say humans by nature. Have a desire. Don't, no, no, you have to repeat everything I'm saying. <laughs> but you're a good student. Thank you. We have a desire from God to want to do the act of reproducing. We want to always be intimate on a way that will create babies. We have that very same spiritual desire within us to reproduce. God put it in us. It's the spirit of reproduction that is in us. Yet, so many believers, because of fear or shame and embarrassment that people might ridicule you for being a Christian, or God forbid they might hit me on the head with a pipe. Just, you know, they use their fear as a spiritual contraception. Or they put themselves in the place of being spiritually sterile. 
and produce no life. That is so contrary to the very spirit that's in you. You need to release it. You need to let your light shine. You need to pray for people. You need to use those prayer cards I gave you. You need to give out Bibles for free. You need to do random acts of kindness. You know, in, in such a time where like the police and the military are in a place where they're being, you know, nationally disrespected by people in government. You see a cop online at Dunkin' Donuts, buy him coffee. Pay for his coffee. They may turn it down because they're not supposed to, but at least attempt to do it. You see a military guy in a diner or a pizzeria, you know, a reservist or a full-time, it doesn't matter. Tell the waitress you want to pick up his check. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> yeah, you do that, John. You tell them. Right? Pay for them. You know why? Because God can use your act of love to, you know, say, why are you doing this? Because I love you. You love me? Well, calm down. I love you because God loves you. And God told me to do this for you. Right? Because those that are the children of God are led by the Spirit of God. And the Spirit of God will always lead you to do things that are acts of love towards people. Especially, he will point out those who need love. Suicide among the military and suicidal among law enforcement is going through the roof right now. You know, you by buying their BLT for them could very much save their life and also bring them into eternity with God Amen. instead of eternity in hell. Just your act of love. Be led by the Holy Spirit. Look for the opportunities and say, okay, Lord, I see an opportunity. Should I do it? Tell me now. And then he'll get you on your face and you start groaning in the restaurant. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. You do your groanings before you get there. Amen? Amen? That's a prayer closet thing. That's not a seven train thing. Right? Because there's a, there's a room that has walls made out of foam that they're going to put you in. If you do that. Right? We don't want to go to the rubber room, do we? No, no, no. We want to go to the throne room. Amen? Amen? Catch you next week. Come on, give the Lord a praise. Hallelujah. Bless his holy name. So how many of you now are going to intentionally begin to tap into praying in the spirit? You know, you can't force yourself to grow in the spirit. I mean, you can. I mean, you can. But you need to allow it to get you to the place where the Holy Spirit will begin to prompt you when to do it. I could decide to do it, and it very well could be fruitful. But there is... There has to be this, I just, almost like you're at a loss. And I don't know what to do. I don't know what to say. You know, and it's the very hyper, super type of intercession. And you know what? That kind of intercession works. Absolutely. Praying in the spirit works, but how much greater when you start to pray in partnership with the Holy Spirit on that level does the will of God manifest in the situation quicker? Amen. Amen. Sometimes the urgency is there because that person is running on borrowed time. And you could be the very one that saves somebody in Spain Amen. or someone in your household. Amen. You don't know who the groanings are for. Amen. Just do it. Now, the devil will come and tell you, nah, -uh, that's not for you. And all, the liar does a good job at lying. He's a professional liar. He created the art of lying, right? There is no imitator of liars. He is the manufacturer of lies. And he knows exactly how to lie to us. You need to pick up the stick and say, not today, devil, not today. Amen? Amen. Give him a shout. Hallelujah, hallelujah. So I guess Akilah is not here today? She's working? Okay.